the Mexican Soccer Federation announced that current president, John De Luisa, has informed club owners that he won't seek to be reelected once his current term ends on May. De Luisa did not attend the press conference where Diego Coca was announced and introduced as Mexico's new manager and clearly felt his input was not as valuable as it once was. Uh, De Luisa leaves behind a new structure that basically did not believe he was the right guy for the job. He was making less and less sporting decisions. Under John De Luisa, the worst results in Mexican soccer in the last 30 years. Yes. But some say a lot of positives, including the best finances ever for Mexican soccer. So is his exit good or bad for Mexican soccer? So neither. It's just another exit. It, you need to realize something about John De Luisa. John De Luisa is a scapegoat. John De Luisa is the shield for the owners. John De Luisa had no control over these sporting decisions. John De Luisa isn't stepping aside, really, okay? They're just saying it's time for somebody else. He will not return. He will not return. It's yeah. time for somebody else because we need a fresh face, somebody that can carry the burden that we can then blame and uh, do as we please later on. Just like they did with Desio de Maria, just like they did with Justino, just like they did with Alberto de la Torre, it's the same thing over and over again. Now, you actually said something that I think people need to realize. The worst sporting landscape for Mexican football in over 30 years, the men, there you go, don't qualify for the World Cup knockout stages. First time since 1978, along with Brazil had the longest record. The men lost two finals to the US. 2021 Gold Cup final, okay? 2020, 2019, 2020, Nations League final. All right, you see that there. Liga Mekis failed to win the CONCACAF Champions, yeah. League's Cup, Campeones Cup. Yeah. The Mexican women failed. They didn't qualify for the U20 World Cup. They didn't exactly. qualify for the Olympics. The list goes on and on and on. Yeah. But you know what he did do? <laughs> Finances. Yeah, he that's, secured that's, that's that what bag. I said. Finance, 2020, 2026 I mean, World Cup, Mel. He also got that here. And he going, remains in that position. And he remains, he in, that remains position. in that position. That's important. So all they're doing, all they're doing is pulling the wool over your eyes. This changes nothing. So to me, it's actually good news just because I believe he was really bad at his job. Now, the question Making is, money what is was his job? What is his job, right? <laughs> that's that's the question mark. What, what, but he had, because people have been listening to some colleagues and he had zero power, zero decision, zero voice. No, he had some, he had some. And eventually he had the power to pull the plug on Tata Martino and he decided that Martino was to stay put in his position. Uh, ESPN Deportes, Actually, ESPN Actually, offered him an, reporter, another extension. Correct, I was gonna say, Mauricio Imai reported that John De Luisa offered Gerardo Martino to stay until 2030 with the Mexican national team. And he said, no, Martino is the one who said, no, let's wait until after the World Cup in Qatar. So I should feel excited that someone is gonna hold that position, a new name, but the problem is, there's already a new de facto president of the Mexican Soccer Federation, and that is Alejandro Iragorri. He's now the man in charge. Well, I think it's he more has, important than president. That's what I'm saying, de facto, right? He has all the power, and we keep saying this and presenting this argument for everyone who are probably have, uh, are, are new to the dynamics of the Mexican Soccer Federation, usually was one person in charge of everything. One decision maker, the owner of Televisa, Emilio Escarraga, and the de facto owner of the Mexican national team. But now, he's not as hands-on as he was. He has delegated now. The power is with Alejandro Aragorri. And maybe John De Luisa just realized this, but the moment Alejandro Aragorri was in charge of this, how do you call it, council of owners? Committee. Committee of yeah. owners. That's when John De Luisa should have realized that he was no longer going to be the Mexican well, Soccer Federation president. You should also realize that it doesn't matter if it's him or if it's somebody else, you are a puppet to these owners. So that this puppet out, the next yeah. puppet in. Uh, in the end, in the end, he was a spokesperson and no more than that. Exactly. He made a media tour that was embarrassing for someone who 
owns the title of president of whatever. He was destroyed by our colleague Paco Gabriel Leano. Not only he ours. He was destroyed by former uh, sporting director of the Mexican national team, Ricardo Peláez, on air. Yeah. He knew his time was up. And it was actually a good time for him to go. Now, after he announced that he was not going to uh, run for re-election, one of the most powerful names in Mexican soccer, actually in Mexican business, yes. Ricardo Salinas Pliego. He is the owner of TV Azteca, the second largest uh, media network in Mexico, owner of Mazatlán, and owner of Puebla, but he doesn't want you to know that he also owns Grupo Salinas. Grupo also, Salinas. Yes, he owns that. He yes. went on a, it was not a rant, but he went on Twitter. He went on Twitter. And, he, and he's good at Twitter. He's, he's good. Wow. If you oh, don't follow active. him, follow he, him. He's active. He's and, active. He, and he came with this list of proposals. Initiatives. Initiatives yeah. for the betterment of Mexican soccer. And I know you're very interested in, yeah. in, in so talking about a few of you, those you proposals. You just touched on, on uh, Ricardo Salinas and, and his importance to Mexican football. You should also know his importance to Mexico in general. He's the third richest person yeah. in Mexico. Um, so when he says something, it's not just an idea. It carries a lot of weight. And he's also given us an inside track to what he wants. He said, prioritize results in the national team. They've got to get at least 20 players in the top five leagues in the world, not the four that they had in Qatar. This is standard. You want your best players playing abroad in some of the best teams in the world, best leagues in the world. Okay. But then he asked to close Liga Mekki. That's big. He wants a closed system. He wants to eliminate Pro Rel because Pro Rel is on pause right now. He wants to eliminate that, but not only eliminate the pro rel on pause, also eliminate the fines that come with being last place they have while it's on pause. Let's get rid of that too. He wants financial stability. So he wants to close the system. That sounds a little familiar. Okay, I'll keep going. He also wants to eliminate the multipropiedad. He wants to eliminate the owners who have more than one team, which is ironic because he himself is one of those owners. Something. And he's been for a while, and not only right now with Mazatlán and Puebla, Morelia, Veracruz, the lead, it's, Atlas. It's funny because this is something that Major League Soccer just did not too long ago. They eliminated the multipropiedad, the multi-ship owners. Uh, and also he wants to introduce fair play financiero, financial fair play. He talked about there being a limit, a cap, a percentage you can spend on players and coaches. Now, sans the coaches, this is very familiar to something I've seen somewhere else. Where? Major League Soccer with oh, yeah. salary cap as well. Yeah. So, along with these initiatives, along with the now relationship that we have, that is League's Cup, Campeones Cup, some, and what we've seen with the national teams, okay, Soccer United Marketing, all these continued relationships that Mexican football has had with the Major League Soccer model. This is more to it. This is adding to it. This is what they're going for. They want a Major League Soccer model. They want to sell franchises. They want to close their pyramid. They want to protect themselves, the owners, the way Major League Soccer owners do. So, two big things for me from what he had to say. Number one, he was not the first one to publicly bring, bring up the idea that promotion relegation will be definitely over. You know who the first one was? Who? Alejandro Aragorri. And the, uh, and, and the same guy, Alejandro Aragorri, had previously stated that if Mexican soccer wanted to grow as a business, they needed to impose financial fair play. That's going to be a tough one. Because I'm sure not every single owner of Mexican gloves will want you to know how their finances I, look I, like. I love how... I love not how, everyone was just going to no, want that. And, and Trust I, me. Can I elaborate on that? Because I think it's a very good point. In, in Mexico, for the longest time, um, when I was playing in Mexico, they had situations, club situations, where they had not only doble contrato, so you would sign two contracts, but up to three contracts. Why? Why would you sign two contracts? Now, let me tell you. They don't want to pay taxes on ah, there contracts. Ah, Exactly. Okay? Uh, now, when you sign a double contract, you sign one that goes 20% to the federation. Okay? So let's say you make $10. Two of those dollars would be registered with the Federation. The other eight dollars would be registered in a civil contract from um, company to you, okay? But what happens is in some of these double contracts, they only pay taxes on the 20 or the two, I should say, excuse me, the two dollars. So if I don't that's get tax paid, fraud, pretty tax much. fraud, tax evasion. If I don't get paid, that's the contract they hand to the Mexican Federation that's being handed to FIFA. So if I don't get paid, they're only liable for the two dollars. Yep. So it's very damning for the player and very damning for the government. So on a lot of different scales, this 
what I was telling you, they will never disclose the books. And if they do, wow. Yeah, uh, just to wrap on this, Ricardo Salinas said that they're going to miss John DeLuisa as a president. But now he's pretty much being a loudspeaker for all the ideas from Alejandro Iraragorri. The best is yet to come from Mexican soccer, I guess. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.